Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to a little 60 seconds reatomized. Um, I'm going to be playing a little bit more of this. Uh, I just wanted to play a few games of it because it's a fun game. I haven't played it in a while. They've made some patches and stuff. Um, I'm going to play this and 60 parsecs for a little bit. Just a few episodes here and there. We'll sprinkle them in. It probably won't be an everyday thing, but uh, I just wanted to have a little fun with it. So, let's see here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do Apocalypse. Um, we'll play as Ted on... Oh, wow, this is way different. On one of visitors' hordes. Trouble every day. Uh, fat Man is the standard. Some junk. Average. Trouble often. Yeah, I'm going to go with that one. This is the standard one. I haven't played in a while, so we're probably going to die super fast this playthrough. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Let's get the gas mask. All right. Gas mask. Soup. Lock. Uh, oh, crap. Oh, crap. Oh, crap. That's not the... Alright, that stuff's in. Rifle. Timmy. You. This. Dolores. Water. Water. Boom. Axe. Map. Radio. Survival book. Water. Uh, we're going in. Alright, hopefully that's enough stuff. It wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. Day one. I mean, that don't look half bad. Just a second before the blast. As close as long as we're all together, we can make it work down here. Remember, hearing canned soup is healthy for you. Our shelter used to be fully stocked, but somehow we always found a better way to use the stock piles instead of leaving them for an emergency. Once we had a soup dinner party. Another time we had a rifle. Another time we needed the rifle to help our neighbor watch our vicious fight against raccoons. Luckily, some of the supplies were left untouched. Flashlight, nice. We don't have that much food. Just barely enough water. It's the best stock shelter we've ever seen. Nobody gets food on day one. There's so many things you can do in a tiny bunker, so we thought, hey, now, why not play games? They're not just for kids, you know? <clears throat> All right, playing some games day one. Looks good. All right, we thought playing the silent game would be a good idea. The sounds was too annoying, and we quickly stopped. Ted is fine. Nothing to report. Timmy's good. Okay. Nobody gets anything day two. Our neighborhood is still highly radioactive. Trips to the surface are a big risk to our health right now. But I got the gas mask, so we're going to prepare one. All right. Peculiar. It seems that the whole shelter has been shaking every couple of minutes, and it feels like... It's getting stronger every time this happens. Here it comes again, and it's way worse. It's an earthquake. Hold on to something. Oh, no. I need the gas mask, but our radio and our flashlight. Oh. That sucks. Okay. Well, we might be able to fix the radio with the book. Dang, there goes two of our items immediately. That's not awesome. All right, Ted wishes water's all they want. They can live one more day without water, I think. All right, enough sitting around. We're going to send Timmy with the gas mask. Go get us something good, Timmy. We need stuff. All right, so everybody gets water today. Maybe some soup. Alright. 
Let's see here. Today we met a bunch of people dressed in what looked like Halloween doctor outfits. They claimed to be a field hospital, moved from place to place, attempting to help those hurt by the hazards of the wasteland. The problem is, some of their supplies got eaten by something that looked like a Sasquatch. They're asking if we have any spare hydrogen peroxide. I'm tight on water, guys. Sorry. We need it more than you. All right. Was it... Was this... What is this scam? They're not even real doctors. No way we're giving these crooks anything. All right. Nobody's thirsty anymore. Everybody's good. Claustrophobia is difficult to fight against, especially in a little cluttered bunker. Maybe if we could open the door for just a few minutes and let some air in. Uh, no. No, 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 no. It's day five. There's too much radiation. We don't open the door. That might not be good for our sanity, though. Keeping the door closed is the right thing to do, but the tensions are rising in our tiny little shelter. This morning has been calm enough for Tad. Nothing. Everything's good. Everything's all good. All right. Wouldn't you know it, our dear Mary Jane keeps a diary. For some reason, she's hiding it in the scout book we keep in our shelter. We have no doubt what needs to be done right now. Each of us must be assigned a role, and the diary must be read aloud, right? I don't think that's a good idea. I'm going to say no. No, no. We're not going to mess with the diary and the book. Alright, everything's still intact. Mary Jane thanked us for respecting her privacy. Then she ripped out and tore all of the pages, set them on fire, stomped on them, and fed them to a mutated rat outside. A bit excessive, but we all feel better now it's been dealt with. Uh, we still wonder what she wrote about us, though. Drink, drink water. Everybody's good. Tomorrow, everybody can have water. Surviving down here is no walk in the park. It won't get easier. We hopefully this will blow over soon and life will be back to what it used to be. Or else, we might face dangers we've never dreamt of. Where the frick is Timmy at? Oh, God. Guys, we might have lost Timmy. Seems to feel bit down with living underground like this. No sunshine, no sky. We need to get rid of the that pessimism and try bring some cheerfulness into our lives. Telux is one need to drink. Not survive without water any longer. All right, everybody drinks. No food yet. We found some weird mushrooms going on one of the walls. Food shortage is no laughing matter, so maybe a good idea to grab a mushroom bite or two. What's the worst that could happen? The worst that could happen is we can get sick and we don't have a med kit, so pass. We have soup still. We're fine. Hey, Timmy's back. Hey, would you... Oh, Timmy brought the med kit. I don't know. And the rifle. Did we have the rifle before? We might have had it. Um, we may be hungry, but there are just some things we'll never eat. Wall fungus is one of them. He came back in the wasteland and is safe with us now. It turned out that calling an ambulance is not an option anymore. We reached the hospital. It's in ruins, but parts of it turned out to still be standing, more or less. We decided to go through the rubble and make the best of it. The canteen had a respectable supply of tomato soup. It looks like this was the only thing they fed their patients. Now we're 100% sure it's healthy. <laughs> uh, fully equipped med kit. Nice. Gas mask. We lost, but that was to be expected. Ted isn't thirsty. No, nobody's thirsty anymore. Timmy is very hungry. Alright, so... Everybody can eat today. Um, still highly radioactive, and our gas mask broke, so we're not going outside. Someone's very serious about banging on the hatch. We we're scared to open it, but it might be some good news, right? We would gladly welcome any friendly face, even if it was our neighbor Ned. We're pretty sure that if there was any reason why our town got bombed, he would be there at that reason. Shall we open? Ah. Uh, very serious about banging on the hatch. Okay. I'm gonna say... Sure. We're gonna get robbed. This is not gonna be good. Oh no, Mary J got sick. Turned out... It was a nice, mysterious fellow in a weird suit. He gave us some soup cans. That's what helped us survive. Okay. It seems he gave us an awful sickness. That coughing is driving us crazy. Crap. Timmy is very hungry. Uh, Timmy needs something to drink. He's not looking well. Contracting the most. Ted is not complaining. Dolores is quite calm. So, Timmy needs food and water. We gotta get him back to 
to healthy. I'm gonna... We're gonna try to let Mary Jane find out the sickness herself first. Alright. Ring, ring. There were... Suddenly the phone starts ringing somewhere outside. We figure it's the phone, but the class should someone go out and answer it. Yes, her. She's already sick. Go answer the phone. When we answer the phone, we could clearly hear a gasp of relief from the caller. They introduced themselves as survivors from near nearby town of Hill Valley. We started exchanging information when the call was cut short. Something went wrong on their end. We hope they'll get back to us. It's still rather sick. Getting something to drink sounds like the right idea. Water, water, water. And Timmy's good. So everybody gets food and water except for Timmy. Timmy's back to good shape. Um, still strong. Scavenging could result in radiation sickness. Yeah. Let's not do that. Dang it. We keep... We can keep sitting here on our backsides in a tiny little bunker where we start thinking about getting away as far as possible to reactive wasteland. Who would have thought that the Reds would ruin such a lovely neighborhood? We could do it on our own, the escaping part, not the ruining part, of course. However, there might be someone out there who can help us. Yeah, there probably is, but an earthquake ruined our radio. Sad face. Um... To use a radio on a regular basis. Yeah, I know. Mary Jane's condition isn't any better today. She's no longer thirsty. Thirsty, thirsty. Timmy's hungry. Alright. We're going to give her and Timmy food because I need her to get better. We might give her water as well. No. We need to conserve water. Going to the waste center right now is unsafe unless you don't mind getting sick. I don't know. We're going to run out of water soon. I might prepare one. We don't have to send it. It's really weird when you get the feeling that something is watching. Our, our shelter is tiny, but this has been bugging us for a while now. We checked all the closets and no one is hiding there. Alive down here besides us. Maybe we're of some kind. If so, we need to show it. We're the dominant species in this little paradise of ours. Oh, God. I guess rifle. This could be bad. Rifle's not broke. Uh, whatever it was, it's dead now. Quite dead. Maybe they're more hiding somewhere in those nasty little holes. Okay, she's still not good. Timmy's no longer hungry. Prefers apple juice right now. Should get him some water. Alright, Timmy, you can have water. I'm thinking... Might have to use the first aid kit on Mary Jane to get her better. Um, and I think we'll send Timmy out again. He may come back sick, but. Alright, Timmy will waste him. We don't know what we'll do if he doesn't come back. Ted should drink something soon. Mary Jane is all well. Can we pair some water? Dolores has to drink. All right, everybody drinks now, and then we got like maybe enough for one more. We got scared a little bit today when all of a sudden our map just fell off the wall. Maybe our shelter's haunted. When the map fell down, it revealed some sort of safe behind it. We don't remember installing it, but we can probably crack it. Well, we technically have all the time in the world to do so. Should we try? Yeah, go for it. What's the worst that could happen? Okay. Uh, we're still not certain how the map fell down. If it was a ghost playing tricks on us, it's a friendly one. Inside the safe, we found some useful items. Cool. Oh, nobody's thirsty anymore. Something's missing. Let's see. Fan hum. Check. Strange noises in our pipes. Check. Hella yells outside. Check. Oh, Dolores hadn't spoken for a while now. That's it. And it's really strange. Talking to her would be a good idea. Sure. Talk to her. See what happens. Everybody looks fine. Help resolve some of her issues and doubts. She feels better now. Everybody's looks good. Okay, okay. Well, everybody can have soup today. Anywho. 
Actually, no, you know what? Tomorrow. That trash can of ours is getting disgusting. Good news is we don't have much of an appetite. Let's try this. This giant green cockroaches are getting. All right, well, smash them with the book. We don't want giant green cockroaches running the place. Don't mess up our book. Thank you. All right, we dodged a bullet this time. That is, if a bullet was huge, hairy, had eight legs, and a glowing head. Hopefully, we don't have to deal with them again. Time to drink something. All right, everybody wants... We're going to do food and water for everybody today. Well, false. Uh, okay, the adults get water. Uh, to find more, maybe we discover... Yeah, I don't have a radio. Sorry. Alright, they say ignorance is a bliss. Another day without a clue. I know. I wish I had something to give her to drink. Give her some soup. Maybe that'll help. Still don't have a radio. Take us some well-stocked government shelter. Yeah, that's unlikely. Use radio on a regular basis. Yeah. Mm, Mary Jane, I I am very sorry. I have no more water. That reminds us, a little weasel had a safe in his living room. We always wonder what's inside. Maybe now's the time to find out. Alright, send Mary Jane because she needs to get out anyway. Maybe she'll find herself some water. Let's see here. We marched to Ned's house and found the safe crack open by the blast. Most of its contents were destroyed. We salvaged something out of it. He likely perished in radioactive agony, all told. Alright, we got cards. And then Mary Jane left. Dang it. Dolores will not last long without water. Well, I got nothing. A uh, young man knocked on our door today asking for help. He says he's been watching us for a while and he believes we're good and decent people, although he hoped... Different circumstances. He could really use our help now. The mission is rescuing his twin sister who went missing, trying to find him. Trade a nearby bandit camp. He promises it will be worth our while. Well, send Dolores because she is probably going to die soon anyway. If we don't get some water soon. Timmy, what the frick? Did Timmy peace out on us? The young man was assisted by a group of other survivors, all armed but really friendly. We found the girl, threw her a weapon, and fought off the bandits. Cool. So hopefully he'll. Turns out the bandit leader is actually their father. Lol. Timmy should return by now. Oh, God dang it. Timmy, you screwed us. Dolores is going to die. They're both going to die. All right. We are dead, dead, dead. We had a chance to meet the strange person. They look like a human, except with triple amount of hands necessary. We listened to a story. We were having a hard time scavenging supplies. Well, here, take some soup. He offered us a deal. If we share some of our supplies with them, they will help us on our next expedition. If we get a next expedition. I think we're both going to die. Like, tomorrow. Alright. Ted looks like he's got one foot in the grave. So does Dolores. Soup for everybody. Dolores can go outside. Why not? I think we're probably dead anyway. Oh, gosh. I think Ted died. Yep, Ted died. She came back. And she brought water. Oh, my gosh. Ah, our mutated friend kept his word. He brought a few friends along. Importantly, everybody came back. Dolores is the last last one standing. Oh, no. They had an attempted break-in. Uh, theater means actors. Where we find actors, you can easily run into mine. So we approach the theater of our tiptoes. We got three bottles of water. Oh, we used our lock, but we found another lock. Nice. Took a padlock from one of the boxes as a souvenir. We also got a briefcase. Two minutes of water took their toll. Dead died of dehydration. All right, Dolores. She's sick. She'd love something to eat. Well, now we don't have any... Any food. 
Never a good time to go out in the radioactive wasteland, but it seems this will become a necessity in this new world of ours. We thought it would be a good idea to make this happen sooner rather than later, and planned a trip outside. Before we could make third step beyond the shelter doors, an unknown creature started growling at us in the darkness. We had only moments to decide what to do. I could shoot it. I think it's the dog, though. What if I don't do anything? Do we get killed? We felt it was too risky to face whatever horror awaited in the shadows we did any same person do. We shut the door. The creature was gone the next morning. Okay. Dolores had been putting on a brave face, but she must be starving. We can't just sit around with Dolores is sick. Well, give her water, because... Can't do anything else. On our way back from the last, we noticed some drawings half wall nearby. It was a very crude map of our town. At one place was marked with an X. Maybe someone's secret stash of soup? God, I hope so. <laughs> Need help. Family. Dead. Lucky find. All right, we got a gas mast. Ah, uh, she must be starving. And she's quite ill. Well, water. I can't do anything else. No radio. Frick. Our days are limited. Unless something, something really awesome happens. Uh, yeah, she's starving. Well, you get water. Um, we were admiring the radioactive landscape when we saw a young woman dressed in ragged camo clothing. She had a nasty looking rag, but she hailed us in a polite manner. She claims to be a hunter tracking a big mutated spider. She ran an ammo to us. We were able to help her out. She would pass back in a while. Here's some ammo. I don't think we're going to live long enough, though. I think we're probably toast. She could have hurt us, but she didn't. That counts for something. So we rewarded her with a spare ammo. Let's see if she keeps her word. I think Dolores is toast tonight. A young singer approached our shelter this morning, encumbered by two different guitars, a big backpack, and a weird contraption holding up a harmonica in front of his face. He asked for some supplies in exchange for a folk song or two. Do we want to share? We got nothing to lose at this point. All right, his songs brought tears to our eyes with good talent Americans like that. Hopefully, times are changing for the better. Uh, he gifted us a working radio. Yeah, but I think Dolores is going to die tonight. All right, we picked out the shelter for a moment. We thought we were as good as dead. A huge hairy mutated spider is approaching our door. We calmed down. Or we calmed down when we heard the familiar voice of a hunter we helped a while back. Thanks to our aid, she was able to track down the spider and tame it. She brought some food along. No clue if it was a spider meat, but we shared a nice, filling meal and even got to pet the spider. It was educational. Hey, she got food. Maybe we won't die. Oh, God, we're, we're still in a rough spot. We have nothing. We have no torso sickness. She's sick, and I don't know. I guess we'll hold on to our water. Um, when we hear a knock on the door and decide to open our hearts, raid always goes up for a bit. Fortunately, this time it was, wasn't was some bloodthirsty raiders, but the brother and sister we befriended some time ago. They're quite ambitious. Together with their group, they're trying to construct a few houses and make a small camp. If we had an axe, we could help them. Okay. Hopefully they will help us in return with some food and maybe water. They did not. Sad face. Uh, we got a few splinters, but the work is done. Dolores is still ill. Water. It's the best I can do. Um, Sleeves so looking trying to carry an equally scruffy bag on his shoulder, pays a visit. He offers us a simple one time deal. For just a can of soup, we get the bag and all of its contents. Sorry. I don't even have a single can of soup. Our grandparents always told us never to buy anything sight unseen, and we're not about to start now. Gone are the times of yard sales we can manage with whatever, with without whatever junk this guy's bag has. All right, well, I mean, you maniacs, you blew it up. Ah, damn you, damn you all to hell. That's something should have told our neighbors when they blew up their barbecue last spring. Those were good times, even if they wasted a pre perfectly good barbecue. We're going to die real soon. We need food and water stat. 
crap, crap, crap. All right, finally, the radio. Can we contact the government? Help. <laughs> Send help. Stat. We knew it. The government has not fallen, and they're coming to save us. They didn't give us an exact dates of the radio transmission, but we're sure they won't keep us waiting long. They said they will be in touch in a couple of days. Yeah. Yeah. But we might not be here in a couple of days. Um, when we look closely at our map, we notice someone had handwritten directions in one of the corners. Will it lead to some kind of treasure? I don't know, but I hope. I hope the treasure is food. Food plus. Dang it, it's a flashlight. After an hour of digging at the local park, or rather what was left of it, we came across a working flashlight. Yeah, well, we are boned. For an isolated fallout shelter, we sure have a lot of disturbances. Something has been making a lot of noise since dawn and we couldn't sleep. It seems to be coming from under the floor. And coincidentally, we just found a manhole that could use to go down and check what's going on. Flashlight! Still alive somehow. Oh, I got a med kit. Nice. Well, might as well use them. And I guess I'll plan an expedition. A group of people dressed in green pajamas knocking on our hatch. It's not something we anticipated yet. This is exactly it. Furthermore, they insisted they are merry men and wish to take from the rich and give to the poor. We're pretty poor, so maybe we could take, make some new friends. I mean, I'm pretty dang poor. So. Like food and water wise, I'll I'll risk it. I think they robbed us. <laughs> Those merry men were not married at all. They told us that we were rich. Oh no. They took our cards and our map. Well send Dolores outside and see what happens. out of everything else so she made it back she brought water uh, house to the docks promising warehouse four water one ammo oh no someone followed us too god dang it I got no food um there's one person we truly miss. It's our great uncle Terry. He used to tell brilliant stories about turtles and elephants and lizards. It would be reassuring to hear one of those stories again. Well, we got a book. We did. The photo we were looking for was stuck between the pages of the scout handbook. What a lucky coincidence. It's a bit blurry, but it's still a wonderful surprise. Crap, crap, crap. I can't go back out. Dolores is too tired. Someone's knocking. Oh god, she's gonna die. Our friends are back, and somehow it's not a surprise they need our assistance yet again. Um, Smosh remains a huge nest of mutant cockroaches. Well, take the gun. We'll teach those cockroaches about something. Something about something. Bang, bang. We gave the group just what they needed to get rid of the unwanted housemates. The insects are gone and the nest was destroyed, so they will need to find another camp to settle in. Hopefully they will choose a bandit camp instead of bothering decent wastelanders like our friends. Yeah, tonight she will not last. And we got no food. It's been a while since we showered. Let's use the ammo. I think we're dead tomorrow, though. Nope. Not quite yet. Dirty or not, it smells the biggest issue. How do we deal with it? We'll give some spare ammo. Why not use the gunpowder to kill the smell? Let's just rub it in. Sounds like a brilliant idea. Water. How about we put that radio to good use? Are we dead? Day 53. Still not dead somehow. Once we had waded through all the static, we found a transmission host to buy some 
nut talking about conspiracies and saucer men from Mars abducting people. It was pretty amusing. Is Dolores invincible? Received no transmission from the army. Ah, oh, they stole our car and stang you, merry men. How are we still alive? Damn it, we missed our chance to let the merry to know where we are. This is good bet they will get back to us again. All right, we can barely breathe in this damn shelter. I guess we'll use the book. Something wrong with our vent. Day 55. How are you still alive, Dolores? <laughs> He's going to be full of pointers on how to fix things. It must have a chapter on nuclear shelter air filtration systems. Before we could even check, we were invaded by a group of angry mutant insects which flew out. Cursed vent. Things hurt like hell. It seemed to give us a fever. Awesome. So then we got sick again. Drink water. During the night, we heard some suspicious sounds coming from behind our door. We peeked into the morning. We saw a leather suitcase. It has no address name on it. Should we open it? Heck yeah, we open it. I'm about to die. <laughs> oh, a can of soup. Oh my gosh. The sudden gift. Despite our suspicions, it turned out it was just a regular tomato soup can. Thank God. Eat. Drink. We might yet survive this if she can get over her sickness. Hear that? It sounds like a herd of animals are stamping just above our heads across what used to be our beautiful town. They are not getting away with that. It might be a perfect opportunity to get some fresh food. Oh, heck yeah. Please do. Please. Oh no. What happened? Too bad we never practiced sharpshooting. Every shot we fired in the direction of those animals that looked like two-headed cows was a miss. Aww. Oh. Rat. To the radio stack to stop for a moment. Somehow we're still alive. Like, this is crazy. Oh, damn it. Something blew up inside the radio. Gosh, dang it. A radio. We needed that so bad. Alright, we could really use some more supplies. We counted all of them today and the numbers did not make us happy. Time to do something about it. We know that a teacher from the local school managed to rescue a bunch of kids and lead them to a nearby building where they're relatively safe. We could really use whatever they have. We could really use it, right? Yes. Yes, we could. Like, so bad. We are facing imminent death. Oh, my science. Four cans. We're now rich. In some spot, for some reason, we don't feel very good about it. Let's just never mention this whole thing again. Come on, Dolores, you gotta get better. Our sorry excuse for a dinner was interrupted by a raspy voice coming from outside saying, Wanna buy a rock? We calmed down when we realized the voice belonged to an old to old man Jim, who used to live in our town. Well, at least we think he did. We just never quite figured out where he stayed. We should probably answer his question. It's impolite to keep him waiting like that. I guess. Do you want to buy a rock? What happened? Old Man Jim was always lovely and friendly to everyone. So of course we opened the door and fulfilled his request. He winked at us and told us the first rock is for free. Which we were happy to hear. A nice rock is a good thing to have. But we don't think we will be able to trade any of our supplies for it. Even if it brings luck like he claimed. Lord, she's still sick. I'll keep feeding her. Hopefully she'll get better. We might be safe inside these walls, but there are problems. Consider none of us could sleep. Dang it. No med kit. If I had a med kit, she wouldn't be sick. Bravely ignoring our symptoms, we tried to get at least an hour or two of sleep. No luck. We're even more tired than we were. There are problems we need to face soon. Let's just hope yawning enough will scare away raiders. Uh, she's not eating for a while. What do you mean? I fed her like yesterday. All right, we'll just give her food today. So we got a lot of food. Susie looking to carry an equally scruffy bag on her shoulder paid us a visit. He offered a simple one-time deal. I'll take it this time. What's in the bag? Give it to me. A cat? Oh, no. 
As soon as the door closed behind him, the trader let the back start violently shake and emit screeching hellish sounds. Terrified, we backed up against the walls. When the beast finally escaped, it turned out to just be an angry house cat. The feline gave us a menacing look and promptly sat in the corner to clean itself. Its collar says, Shirikov. Is that its name? Keep feeding her. Alright, so nasty mutated raccoon like animal shows up around the shelter door almost every night. We tried to sneak up on it, but it jumps away and hides as soon as we open the door. Thankfully, we took the scout book with us. There are instructions inside on how to make a basic trap using a box and some string. We don't have an empty box laying around, but we do have a suitcase. I suppose. Can we catch a raccoon? What happened? We rechecked the trap in the morning. The raccoon scratched and bit a big hole through our leather suitcase and escaped. Weirdly enough, we found some supplies in the broken suitcase. Was this the animals doing, or did they simply forget to put this in here? She like she needs more time to rest. She's no longer hungry. There has to be some water. All right, give her water. All right, a stranger pushing a rusty wheelbarrow filled with all kinds of goods stopped by today. He claimed he's a trader looking to barter some items. Um, offers one water in exchange for the flashlight. Two for the handbook. Oh, I need that handbook, though. I need the water, though, as well. I'll take for the flashlight. This time. The scout book is just like so handy. All right. Before leaving, he uttered something about bandit activity nearby. Dang it. Freaking bandit activity. She's no longer thirsty. We'll give her food. She's got to get better. Sherkov seems to have found to be fond of our checkered board. It's favorite game during stretches of extreme boredom and silence. The shelter's pushing the checkered pieces off the table. As it gazes intently at whoever happens to be sitting the closest, the sound of checkers hitting the floor every 10 seconds is getting on our nerves and taking the game away. Should we let Sharkov play with the checkers? Yeah, I guess so. Why is there a bloody handprint? As soon as we allowed him to play with the checkered board, Sherkov instantly got bored of it. It did sit on top of it for a whole afternoon, though, leaving us with no entertainment whatsoever. The selfish bastard. <laughs> At least it didn't break anything. True. We'll keep... Wait, did she get better? She's fine, but we're not sure. There's a small, muddy pond in the park nearby. Too bad we forgot our fishing rod. Perhaps we could try fishing with something out of the water and use the old suitcase. We could. Now, Dolores is still sick. How have we survived this long? This is insane. Uh, the suitcase wasn't exactly waterproof. Plus, the pond. The water stank to high heaven. was weirdly green and probably radioactive. Suitcase might have melted a little. It was worth it, though, right? Well, I got the cards back. But unfortunately, I don't have the radio. I need the radio and the cards to contact the military. Let's give her some more soup. Well, with only one person, the supplies go way further. Sherkov is still a fresh addition to our little family, so we need to keep an eye on it. And believe it or not, just today we know something else on its collar. It seems to have a metal plate with an address on it, and it's not far. Yeah, let's take a look. See what happens. And the cat's gone. Before we reached the end of our street, we were stopped by two men wearing dark coats and slouch hats. They rushed towards the cat to pick him up, saying they'd been looking for him for a while now. Supposedly, Sherkov belongs to an old lady who's rather fond of it and misses the little guy dearly. We shrugged and went back to our shelter. The cat didn't seem to care, so why should we? So why should we? Good thing we didn't get too attached to it the last few days. Her health has not improved. Well, I mean, I'm trying here. Where'd that green puddle come from? But dear, the pipe is leaking green gear. That's not good. That's not good at all. We need to act now and no one packed him up. What do we do? Gas mask. I mean, she's already sick, so. Um, ha, problem solved. No leak, no mess. Back to our tidy little shelter. And her health still hasn't improved. 
All right, every new smell attacks our nose in a little shelter. In this little shelter, instantly there's isn't much we can we can miss. So when a single brick fell out from the wall, revealing a tight opening, our senses were immediately invaded by a terrible stench. I guess check it. What happened? Ah, soup. We looked in the hole, fearing something might come to us with claws, fangs, other mutated and sharp body parts, but nothing happened. Instead, we found a dead rat who was trying to break into a can of tomato soup. He failed miserably. We have a feeling we'll be luckier than him, so we confiscated it. <laughs> we gave the rat a proper burial in an empty can. He deserved that much. All right. Just keep feeding her. Maybe she'll get better. Um, a woman came by with a creature she claims is a camel, provided the camel have five legs. Um, or for radio, I can trade the checker for one more thing of water. Let's do that. Now we, we have plenty of supplies to last us a while now, if she'll just get better. Um, she went her way before she left. She insisted we should listen to the radio broadcast if we ever want to get out of that shelter. Yeah, you think? I don't know, I gotta fix it. Oh, to our surprise, Shirkoff's back in our shelters. We're not exactly sure why or how it came back. Uh, is it our good care of it? It appreciates our kind hearts, optimism, or just our stockpile of soup cans? Only time will tell. Yeah, I guess it will. Um, There it goes again. Noises. Weird noises all the time. They come to by its walls. Is there something behind the door? We don't know, and it's driving us insane. We should sit down and relax, otherwise we might get paranoid. Yeah, let's try not to go crazy, too, on top of everything else. We got cards. Having some fun made us forget about... What was it again? She's quite ill. She hasn't drank. All right, have some water. Loud crash. Surprising shriek. A bit of debris falling from our ceiling. Truly a recipe for a good start of the day. As it turns out, Shirkoff found a new toy. A bit of innocuous wiring that it ripped out of the wall. Who knows what the cable's for, but our lights are still on, so it can't be that important, right? Should we take the wiring away from our fluffy friend and investigate it? Sure. This could be bad. Grab the cable and follow it to a rusty old truck parked our neighbor's driveway. Upon the opening the door, we were confronted with two men wearing huge headphones who looked extremely surprised to see us. They wiretapped our shelter when we were asleep, and they were listening to everything we said. We gave them hell and marched back to our bunker. We haven't done anything about her sickness. It's because we can't. <laughs> I have nothing. Today we were visited by a strange-looking little man who introduced himself as a traitor. He insisted the prices are so low that it's practically like cutting his own throat. The least we could do is take a look. For some reason, we don't really trust him. They offer a radio for a checkerboard. Dang it! I traded our checkerboard already. They offer flashlight for a... No, I'm going to pass. If Dolores ever gets better... Well, I can't go out because there's bandits in the area. Despite his desperate attempt to sell us all kinds of things, useless or not, we turned down the man's offerings. Probably for the better. He did look untrustworthy. Keep feeding her. She's got to get better. The agents who are spying us are now at our door. I want to explain this up. Should we hear them out? Yeah, I guess so. Why not? They seem kind of harmless. I think they're more interested in the cat than us. Uh, they briefly waved some sort of ID cards in front of her face and told us they're a top secret government mission. The wiretap wasn't the spy on us, but rather on the cat. It's suspected of being a Soviet agent. They're willing to let us into their super top secret government safe house if we help them in some of their top secret missions. They assured us they'd contact the scam with more details. Okay. Crazy people. Uh, what's that sound? A galloping horse? We rushed to the door and we were greeted by two men dressed like they'd come from a medieval fair. We identified the source of the sound. One of them was holding two rocks and hitting them against each other constantly while the other was skipping and pretending to be a rider. <laughs> uh, I don't have a map to help them. That's the... Uh, Knights of the Holy Grail. Although we tried to decline politely, the guests were clearly offended. They galloped away, waving their wooden swords and screaming something about cutting down shrubberies. <laughs> Absolutely crazy. Oh, gosh. 
Dolores. I need you to get better. Uh, we're either going crazy or this entire shelter is crawling with little insects or worse. It's worse. They're spiders. And it's not some miniature ones, but huge, furry, and very creepy beasts. We've got to do something about it. Smash them with a book. God, Dolores, you look awful. Uh, we always knew books were precious. They are the perfect weapon for waging total war on insectoids of any kind. Fear will keep the local spiders in line. Fear of the scout handbook. While chasing them around the shelter, we found a misplaced water bottle. Nice. Okay. Um, the last time we went out on an expedition, we noticed an abandoned tank just sitting out there in the open. It looks damaged, but make it needs useful supplies. So we send someone to investigate. Yeah, why not? Oh, no! What happened? The last thing we expected was a giant explosion. We get the debris falling from the sky and hitting the sad remains of our house. The tank must have been booby-trapped or contained volatile explosives. Why do we do it? Why? Dolores! <laughs> Dolores down! Ah, oh, crap. Well, we didn't live that one. I mean, it was a good attempt. I survived way longer than I thought. All right, so note to self, watch the tank. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.